I was buying alfalfa the other day, and I got to talking to this fellow, Mr. Crutcher. Good yeah. talking to you again. It's good to he meet said, you again. He said, you got to come in here and look at these bowls. And I'm saying, hey, what are you talking about? He you started talking about woodworking. So we came into your shop. I should say your shop, but it's actually Dandy Dog's. It, it's Dandy Shock. It's his headquarters. He's over here <laughs> chilling. But you know what? I saw all this beautiful work. You know, and that's that's the way I like to find this kind of stuff when you just stumble across them. Who knew that you had this shop where you've spent all this time turning bowls? You've got everything from your first bowl to what you're working on now. What I find fascinating when I look through your bowls is, as you talked about, the character. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at this bowl right here, reaching across you, you explained that this is a maple tree, but not just any maple tree. There's a condition that this wood has to get in, and, and what is that exactly? This is a maple tree that had died, and it's called spalted maple. It's, a, it's wood that has begun to deteriorate, and all these different colorations are done by fungi attacking, attacking the de deteriorating wood. Wow. So that gives that color and beauty and character like you wouldn't have in a normal tree. Absolutely. So how do you find this wood? There, there's 300 acres in this farm. We sold about 200,000 board feet of timber about 10 years ago. Wow. And the forester that I worked with and continue to work with said, uh, unless you're willing to go in and kill what we call the weed trees, you'll never have a white oak forest again. It will be hickory and maple and ash and has no value. So we killed thousands of trees. Now I'm finding out they have a value <laughs> when you convert a chunk of wood into a wooden bowl. They make beautiful furniture bowls. Now when did you start this whole bowl turning process? About 10 years ago, I guess. We grew tobacco and this was the place we stripped the tobacco. When we quit tobacco, I thought, well, that's too good a building not to be took, put to some use. And I've always enjoyed playing with wood. I've never turned a bowl in my life. But at that time I thought, I think I'll put me a stove in there and I had a friend who had given me a little, uh, an old lathe. I have since bought two that were not cheap. Yeah, I got it too. Your stove works good too, by the way. <laughs> I, I had trouble getting it warm in here all morning, but it, it's, it's doing yeah, it's well doing now. It's doing its job now. <laughs> now I see hickory and I see cherry and I see all kinds of stuff, but I guess the real thing that I'm keen to know is how do you start? I see I see a marker <laughs> on that piece of wood right there. Show me what that piece is. I cut a block, block of wood usually 14 inches long, oh, just off the end of a, of a log. And then I'll, I will set it in a jig which I made for that purpose. And I'll draw lines, a four inch interval. And then I'll take a chainsaw and, and split that, make, a, make a, a rectangular block of wood out of it. I made these out of out of quarter inch plywood or three eighths inch plywood maybe it is and I will lay lay this bow marker on top of the block of wood and then draw around it with a magic, magic marker and, and the center punch the center so I, so I have a true center and then I will put that in the lathe clamp as you, you can see one that's clamped in there now mm -hmm. and I will make, a, make it into a circle and I'll also turn, turn the back of it into I call it a foot, which I can clamp on a variable diameter chuck, fasten it into the lathe to, to begin making it into a bowl. This, this one is about 11 or 12 years old, and it's been over on a shelf in the house across the road as a memento of where I, how far I have come. This was the first one I ever turned. When I uh, looked back at it, I thought, well, it's tremendously primitive, but it, at least hey, it's, it's a circle. <laughs> I could eat my cereal in that bowl. <laughs> now, you, you've sold stuff all over the place. How far has your work gone? I have scattered bowls from Florida to New York City and from California to Maine, the state of Maine. At least three or four of those are, are gifts to ministers who have been at our church through the years. Well, wow. And I just, just, just sent them to them as, as, a, as, a, as a remembering gift. When I was getting ready to graduate from college over at UK, group of us were sitting down one afternoon, it was long in mid-April, and we were getting ready to graduate in May, and someone brought up the question, where do you plan to work, and how long do you, do you plan to work? And the gist of the conversation was, I want to get me a job, work 20 years, and retire. That just didn't appeal to me. Because <laughs> I thought, surely to goodness, there's something out there beyond 20 years. 20 so, years goes by pretty quick, doesn't it? <laughs> 
20 years passes very quickly. Yeah, to believe it. So I. actually, I'm four times that now. <laughs> I thought, I've always loved to play with wood. I started playing around, and this was number one. <laughs> How long did that take you, that ball right there, if you had to guess? Probably close to, probably a good half day. Good half day. How long would it, something like that take you today? Uh, 30 minutes. No kidding. <laughs> it's like you've come a long way. So you go from the chainsaw stage to this piece of cedar right here. This little, little cir circle on the back clamps into an adjustable diameter wood, wood turning chuck. And that clamps in the lathe like, like so. You see one clamped in here on a, on a face plate. Now, do you make sets on purpose, or do you make pieces one piece at a time and then go from there? Or how do you how do you designate which wood is going to what? <laughs> or is this kind of one thing at a time? Basically, I have t I started out turning primarily walnut and cherry, mm -hmm. and I would I would turn a big 12, 14 inch diameter salad bowl, and then I would make individual serving bowls. I don't think I'd be bragging to say that's art. That's beautiful. Beautiful art. <laughs> this certainly should be very familiar to anybody viewing this in Kentucky. This is Kentucky Red Cedar. That's one that has been finished. And the, the finish I use is tongue nut oil. Tongue nut oil has been around a long time and it still, still does a beautiful, beautiful finish yeah. on, on wood. Now, what happens if a bunch of people see this and they say, I want one of those spalted maple bowls. Have you got enough to make a bunch of them? I don't think I will run out of supply. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I would, uh, it would be a problem I would like to experience. <laughs> There's a hundred acres of timber on this farm, so it, it will outlast me by many, many, many generations. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, we'll let people know where you are in case they do want something like this. We'll give them a telephone number. How about that? My cell phone number is 600-3434, of course, 502-600-3434. If you want to come look at the shop, you're most welcome. They are available. Well, Mr. Crutcher, thank you so much for showing us around your, your buddy's shop here today. And I will see you time and again because uh, my critters are eating me out of house and home. They love your alfalfa. <laughs>